Hello and welcome to Miracle Institute. I'm Professor Abha Sharma. Let's take the next question. Question number four. A poet once referred to an old map as a tattered coat upon a stick. That is an example of metonymy, sarcasm, simile or metaphor. First of all, let's take this line, a tattered coat upon a stick. That means an old man wearing worn out clothes. His body is also deteriorated. He's an old man with a stick. Then you get an image of a scarecrow. You know, old people, they look like, they scare young people according to the poet. And who's the poet? W.B. He feels that the young people do not care much about the old people and so also about the old culture, art and other things. So in his poem, Sailing to Byzantium, he just wants to leave everything in Dublin because he finds the younger involved in the sexual activities, uh, the birds in the trees and fish in water. They are all, you know, increasing their types. So he doesn't like all this much now. And he wants that people should have some inclination towards saving the old art and culture, the artistic big buildings. So he says he wants to sail away to Byzantium. Byzantium, the other, the other name for Constantinople. Constantinople, Istanbul, the center of art. So there are four choices, metonymy, sarcasm, simile and metaphor. Metonymy, metonymy means uh, using a part for the whole. That means I drank the cup. You, were not, you did not drink the cup. You drank the liquid inside the cup, whether tea or coffee or whatever. So it, it cannot be metonymy. It is a sarcasm. It is sarcasm. The poem is full of sarcasm. But then in this phrase, there is no such sarcasm. A tattered coat upon a stick, no simile, because no as or like, very simple formula. If there is a comparison between two things, using as or like is simile. If there is no simile, the simile is there, my love is like a red rose. Yes, that is a simile. Okay, metaphor, of course, a metaphor, the image an old man, tattered coat, the body is worn out, upon a stick clean and thin and all, scary kind of person. So the correct answer should be metaphor. Next question. Which of these is not a pastoral elegy? Oh, nice one. Lycidas, in memoriam, Thurisus, Adonis. What is a pastoral elegy? Elegy means mourning in the pastoral background with all those shepherds, the trees, uh, the gods, druids and other things. Also the mythology, the mythological gods who come in the pastoral surroundings. Lycidas? Lycidas of course. This, is, this was written by Milton for his Cambridge dead friend Edward King who got drowned. Milton did not write because he was too much attached to him. He wanted to show off his qualities of writing. That's why he wrote Lysidas. In Memoriam. In Memoriam was written by uh, Lord Tennyson for his dead friend Arthur Hallam. But in memoriam is of complete volume. There is a poem. The first poem is break, break, break. And there he misses his friend. He writes an elegy kind of thing. It's a small poem of say three stanzas or so. Where he says the nature is normal. The nature doesn't seem to be affected by the death of my friend. He says the vanished hand. That is the touch of friend is lost. And he feels lost sitting by the same seaside. He can hear the little uh, children playing on the sand, a young man singing, the boats or the ships coming to the harbour, but he misses his friend. He's no more. He's absent from the world. Very nice one. But 
then it is not a pastoral elegy. Uh, the volume ends up with endymion, that is the balance song. The third one is Thyrsus. Thyrsus was written by Matthew Arnold for his lost friend Arthur Clarke. This, th this also has the pastoral qualities. I have not read this much but still it has Adonis again. Oh nice nice one by P.B. Shelley. He wrote for Keats, John Keats who died in Rome suddenly out of consumption. He had tuberculosis. He was a very, very sad man then. He had certain misfortunes, you know, in his life, which came one after the other. There were many brothers. One brother got married and left them. The other died of consumption. His love was one-sided. Therefore, Fanny Brown did not reciprocate his love. And... Uh, he himself was suffering from consumption, which was a deadly disease. Many of the writers died uh, through this disease. So, Adonis, again, remembering uh, Keats by Shelley. You know what? Keats wanted to see his name written in the list of the greatest English poets. But then when he wrote something, I think he wrote Endymion, there was an anonymous reader who criticized him in the Blackwood magazine. Keats could not, you know, take up this criticism. He felt very bad. And you know what? After death or when his poems became popular, he, he was added in the list of the greatest poets of English. And what was written on his epitaph? His name was writ in water. His name was written in water, not only on the papers or in the list. Water. He was such a great poet. So Shelley is very, very venomous or say, uh, he shows his dislike against that anonymous reader who the death of Keats. Elegy. So, in memoriam is not a pastoral elegy. The other three are pastoral elegies. Again, the sixth question. In Peke's Waiting for Godot, the characters often use dislocated, repetitious, and cliched speech primarily to now four choices illustrate the essentially illogical, purposeless nature of the human condition. Recreate the workings and of the subconscious. Mock the exaggerated dignity and wisdom of modern self-professed intellectuals. Fourth, reinforce the comic action and farcical plots. Now this is Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett. <laughs> who received the Nobel Prize in 1969? I think so. He was a very shy man. He could not give any speeches. He, could not, he, he never used to talk. He was... He talked less. He even said that he, has, he had very little quality for happiness. So, you know what? He could not write things full of happiness and all. And that was a phase when absurd theater took place and this was one of the texts which we study for modern for postmodernism and also for absurd theater the play is totally absurd there are two characters they are also vagabonds Nadamir and estrogen and Nadamir is called uh, gogo estrogen is called Didi in the play and uh, there are again one more set of uh, characters pozo and lucky Lucky is very lucky. He doesn't have to think for his work because he's a servant. And Pozo is double troubled because he has to find work for himself and for his servant. You know what? In this life, we are born without a purpose. We have to look for the purpose. You know, if you talk to the people who talk on positive things, this play doesn't work. But in reality, we all think that 
if suppose we finish out our, our graduation, it will be very good. We did something. We'll get. We'll become something great. Someone great. Then we think, oh, post graduation will make us greater. So let's do that. Then people say, oh, get a job. Then your mission will be accomplished. Then after the job, oh, you have to get married. Then you have to get kids. Then you have to worry about the kids' education, grooming, etc., etc., etc. And then what happens? In the end, you die. So, a very nice subtitle was given by Samuel Beckett. Nothing to be done. You have exactly nothing to be nothing to do when you take birth you have to find time you know you all have to die there's one 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 action you have one thing we all are waiting for and that is death nothing else it's a pessimistic kind of thing but then um, the play is very very good very philosophical and it gives you the theory of existentialism what are we existing for are we existing for to die? I mean, are we just waiting to die? That was the purpose for him. He, when he got his Nobel Prize and he was um, called in Sweden, Stockholm, Jampar, wherever you get the Nobel Prize, he refused to give speech while receiving the Nobel Prize. So he refused to go there at all because he could not talk. He did not like talking. He used to speak.